excuse me, <laughs> it kind of caught me at a time where <clears throat> kind of catching something. But um, <clears throat> to be honest, playing games in this kind of condition doesn't really offer the best results. So I decided to sit back and have a warm cup of tea and watch something that was kind of close to it. A couple years ago, I talked about a cartoon based on, in my opinion, one of the worst video game characters ever made. This cartoon, of course, from my recollection, only aired one pilot episode and showed up randomly one morning beside yet another pilot episode, also based off a video game property. And which property was that? Battletoads! <coughs> Without going too much into detail, <coughs> Battletoads is a fairly well-known video game series that uh, kind of disappeared along with the 90s. And while I'd like to talk about the games more in detail, um, we're unfortunately going to be talking about this. It's kind of funny to note that out of the two pilots revealed to kids back in the day, this was the only one of the two I've been able to find a physical copy of. Yes, not even Bubsy was allowed to be purchased and viewed because apparently no one would probably do that anyway. So let's see what this cartoon has to offer, warts and all. <laughs> The main theme is basically a take on the whole surfer Beach Boys music. I mean, let's be fair, after Michelangelo came about, every iteration spawned afterward had to have some sort of surfer mentality connected to it. The song itself is pretty dull, only showing highlights of the cartoon we're about to see, which is titled... Battletoads. Ah, I see we're going all out here. We start off our story with a robot bird flying through space carrying a turkey and a lady on board. Apparently, this is Princess Angelica. No, that's Professor T-Bird. Princess Angelica is the one with blonde hair. No, not that Angelica. This Princess Angelica is the princess of... of... Princess Angelica, you are the last star child of the blood! That's apparently the only explanation we're gonna get about this. Uh. <sighs> oh. They're being chased off by the evil Dark Queen, named Dark Queen. Compared to the video game version, you can see why they had to tone her down a bit. She's the queen of... Um, the first star child of the bl I don't know. Well, anyway, she's trying to get the galactical amulet that's around the princess's neck. What does it do? Uh, forget that. Suddenly we're sent to... I'm guessing Earth, even though our next establishing shot is these guys, who are neither green, slimy, nor cool and badass in any way, shape, or form. Morgan Ziegler. Dave Shar, George Pye, you three are the biggest losers in the history of Waldo P. Oxnard Jr. High. Whoa, what is this principal's deal? I know junior high is a pretty strict period in a kid's school lifetime, but I think it's a bit off color for a school official to call any kid a loser. Besides, what the hell did they do wrong exactly? Because you're a bad influence on each other, so I'm splitting you three up. But sir, you can't do that. We are our only friends in the entire universe. So let me get this straight. These three kids, whose only cause of mischief so far, according to the viewer, is that they've been best friends. And this principal's first order is that they never see each other again inside and outside of school? I think boot camp would be a step up for these kids. Anyway, since they're not supposed to be together anymore, we get to see what losers they are when interacting with other people who are not losers. Watch Okay, George is pretty athletic for a fat kid. Hurry up with those signs. The big game is tomorrow. How's that for a totally eyeball flying attention grabber? Dave is artistic and creative? That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life, except for you. Yeah! <laughs> and I'm suddenly reminded of my junior high art class experiences. Thank you, cartoon. If I had any experience at it. And Morgan is the worst nerd ever. Why are these three bad influences again? I mean, out of the three, if you look like someone out of the Revenge of the Nerds and you make these guys look like grade A computer geniuses, you really ought to reconsider your life choices. How did you ever organize Morgan Ziegler? Uh, well, nothing, now that you mention it. Not to mention, this guy is supposed to be the leader. 
I'm very certain giving him that voice won't bite this cartoon in the ass later. Anyway, back on... Planet X, Professor T-Bird and Angelica find a relic that holds the genetic essence of the Battletoads. Genetic... Nah, I don't want to know what that consists of. Oop, but too late! The Dark Queen finds them and holy Magilla! Apparently decimates the building they're in! I, I think... Maybe they were in the basement? Anyway, no time to waste as the Professor takes out his pocket golf club that opens up a map and... Uh, Professor? Uh... You might want to save this lecture for another time, sir. You're kind of getting bombarded by death. So finally, he opens up a portal towards, you guessed it, a planet called Earth. Rather specifically, Oxnard, California, because, you know, beaches and crap. So yet again, in the gulp and blow, we revisit our heroes and Really seems like that principal's ruling worked out for him, didn't it? Also, I don't know what Galaxy Wars is, but I really feel like playing that about now. <laughs> sure enough, the two galactic damsels in distress enter through an arcade cabinet monitor. Probably would have been pretty fitting if it were the actual Battletoads arcade game, wouldn't it? Well, this is a kid's cartoon. Please do not fear us! We are interstellar travelers seeking sanctuary on your remote planet! This is the Princess Angelica. If she is not protected... Thanks for continuously cutting to that uninterested convenience store, Clark. I'm sure it adds to the pacing. By the way, I can't help but find it funny that the Professor and the Princess immediately pick the first three dorks they meet up with on this mystical new planet to become the most powerful guardians of the galaxy. So the bird tosses the essence onto the three and they transform into hideous mutant creations. <laughs> Dave, you're a toad. Now pardon me, but why should we do any favors for the guy that just turned us into toads? Uh, help! <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. I kind of want to see where she's going with this. So in short, the bad guys come in through a slurpy dispenser, grab the princess, and the Battletoads spring into action by Gil. It's okay, folks. It's okay. We have other princesses to replace her in just case of emergencies. We also get to see the Battletoads' power in action, turning their limbs into various gigantic things because... that's just the power of the toad? Nice hands, Dave. Why don't you can it, Howard? Life is one big basketball game! I'm a shaker, running, skull scratching, super toad man! Taste cold, slushy, big oids! Okay, toads, you're gonna have to work on your trash talking. Take a lesson from the masters of it. No fly sucking, slimy, crooked piece of sludge toad is taking over my planet. This is just one of the things that was carried on from the games, and I have to say, while it is just a video game world logic, it always kind of baffled me, and it's still a bit awkward to carry on to an animated form, especially with very little introduction to it. But, like I said, when you're trying to make a cartoon about ripped frogs trying to save a space princess, little logic is going to help in any case. Mr. Rash, I have to say that this is not a natural occurrence. I'm gonna have to drain your hand of excess fluids, and hopefully the swelling will go down after a couple weeks. If you'll excuse me, your friend in the other room has a case of lead foot. So, the Battletoads save the day, the princess is safe, and the Dark Queen is vanquished. Or is it? <laughs> No, we still got about 10 more minutes of this, so let's continue with how we're going to name these guys. I W Zitz, and from now on, you are Rash, and you shall be called Pimple. Thank you, Princess. I await your orders to bring aboard the Royal Guardians Acne, Pus, and Cyst. You're putting us on, right? Though, to be fair, they can transform back conveniently if they wanted to. You can return to your normal form any time you choose. You mean we can be totally grossed out heroes and still be our old selves, too? The Street Sharks have got to feel royally screwed with the word of this concept. Yeah, we're totally awesome but hideous shark people now. Yeah, man. I can't wait to bite off some evil henchmen heads with our radically powerful jaws. Let's test it out tomorrow, bros. For now, let's continue on with our regular human lives. Oh. 
Oh, oh my god. We're more monsters than men forever now. Psychotronic! Incredible! Cosmorific! Let's get normal! <laughs> Out of all the famous Battletoads catchphrases so far, I want to see Let's Get Normal put on a shirt. Moving on, we basically set up how Professor T-Bird and the Princess will get along living in Oxnard with these geeks for the rest of their miserable lives. By forcing them upon their favorite teacher, Mr. Thorpe, who we've only now been introduced to. And never again seen afterwards. I'm sure he's thankful for that. Also, the princess has to get a job, which is another plot point, where she gets to be a waitress at a donut shop complete with exploding jelly donuts, I guess. I am new to Oxnard and know little of these jelly donuts. Toads, prepare yourselves! Let's get horny! Let's get horny? Kind of an inappropriate time for that, Consider your enemies just leapt out of a washing machine, but I've seen worse times to... Oh, they were saying warty! <laughs> like a toad's warts! Let's get warty! <laughs> what was I thinking? While these guys are fighting off more pigs and rats, a meanwhile transition reports to us that the princess, still at the donut shop, is being kidnapped again. So it's time to go after them, which only at this point I've noticed can be done so easily that I think the scientists from Aperture Science would have their heads rolling. You'll have to enter through the base, climb the central shaft, and break in at the top! So wait, why can't you just land at the top and enter there? There are obviously no threats around here except for the fact these buildings look pretty phallic. Let's get warning! No! Well, hang on, we need a connection to the video game, so why not this one? Let's give it some overhead shots where we can see this thing that makes no real logical or physical sense to begin with, but pretend it has a purpose. This works so well when you transfer video games into cartoons, doesn't it? Works every time! The queen turns into a giant tornado, a la the video game, so after the toads run into it a bunch of times like idiots, they just bring a laser over to the main middle thing that does stuff, and it destroys the queen's plans. I j Look, they saved the day, that's all you really need to know. I'm powerless. We just can't fight them. <laughs> Whoa, queen, easy there. Let's get warning! Stop it! I will muster my last remaining power reserves and destroy them with the Whipsaw. The Whipsaw? The Whipsaw. Oh, the Whipsaw! Well, forget that mess, because back on Earth, the kids are back to their old tricks of being friends. So the evil principal, Mr. Weatherby, puts a stop to their antics, only to realize that they're now the Battletoads. They're evil freaks! Good job not telling, We're telling kids. The truth. Are you serious? This isn't over yet? We get another threat from the Dark Queen of her flying her witsaw. <laughs> I suppose that's what it is. Which is just a giant UFO that acts like a saw blade. Oh no! It's headed towards the mall! <gasps> oh no! Not our national monument! The mall! <laughs> Anyway, we've seen this all before. The Battletoads head inside and are suddenly cornered. Fire! No, 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 your majesty! If they knew that was gonna happen in the first place, why were they positioned that way? Uh, whatever, they save the day, everyone knows who the Battletoads are, but who cares? The principal renounces his ban on them, being friends. What a remarkable little proton diffractor! Actually, that's a fountain pen. Let me have it before you hurt yourself. Do oh. oh, Battletoad house! Well, like Bubsy, you can see why this didn't become a series. And you know what? I'm probably going to be in the minority here and saying it wasn't that bad. I mean, sure, the animation was pretty sloppy, the designs could have used a major overhaul, and yeah, pretty much most, if not all, the jokes came out a little flat. But for a premise for a cartoon series, I've seen a lot worse. I sometimes feel if we had perhaps a couple more episodes to work off of, this 
could have worked. It's just a shame that pilots, in order to sell a series, have to cram so much information into itself in a very limited amount of space, or in this case, maybe it was given too much time to work with. When you want to sell something, an origin story as a pilot is probably the worst thing to go by. You honestly want to portray what the show would be about in an episodic basis, meaning it should answer questions like, what would the Battletoads do each episode? Is the Dark Queen going to be honestly their main threat every time? What could carry it on a series? Especially if it's going to be 13 episodes a season. But really, when you think about this the time it came out, with the influx of Ninja Turtle carbon copies at the time, the idea was oversaturating the market. And even though the premise is pretty different in a lot of regards, you can see how something like this wouldn't really turn any heads at the time. It just wasn't unique enough. As a game, Battletoads can be really fun, inventive, and very challenging. If you're going to try to bring that into an animated medium, you better make sure you can offer more than just references. But hey, at least it wasn't the Cheetah Men. Or maybe it's because two years ago I had to sit through something much, much worse. And with that, made this one sting a little less. With that, I'm going to go get some rest and catch up on things. I'll see you guys later. Stay excellent to one another. <clears throat> <coughs> Oh my god, they're gonna make a battle toast for Xbox. Microsoft, please, please don't screw this one up. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for liking and subscribing. You're really helping me keep going. Helping spread my videos around does ensure more videos in the future. Check out some other videos and follow the links in the description below to see more electronic heroes. And make sure to check out the Patreon page to further help to support the show.